guys, welcome back. So today I'm out here shooting the Tavor. This is a US made rifle. I just picked this rifle up on Friday. I'm not ready to do a review of the rifle just yet. This is my second time to the range with the rifle. I have several hundred more rounds to put through it before I feel comfortable giving you guys an opinion on it. However, so far I've you know probably put a couple hundred rounds through it, really enjoying the rifle, but I wanna bring you along on my test firing so you can get kind of used to the rifle and ask any questions you might have in the comments below, which then I'll try to answer those questions in the full review. So anyway, let's get going. Let's get started shooting this rifle a little bit more. I'm really excited about it. I've been waiting for it for a long time. So one of the questions that I had, and I know a lot of you guys had as well, is how does this thing eject? How does it work for left-handed shooters? Well, first of all, I brought out some Wolf. This is 223 spec, so it's not quite as hot as 556. I'll stick it in the rifle, load it up, and I'll show you. Watch the ejection pattern, and I'll shoot it both right and left-handed. The cases when I shoot left-handed with the Wolf are just brushing across my chin. They're not hitting me like with the Steyr Aug. This thing is just barely flinging the brass past my chin with the Wolf. Now let's try the same thing. And this is a Gen 3P mag, by the way, with some Federal 5.56. Watch the ejection pattern on the rifle. See what it's doing with the hotter ammo? It's throwing it forward. I'm not worried about where I'm putting my face on the rifle. It never even crosses my mind. And with the 5.56, it's not touching me at all. It's working very, very well. So it's very easy to transition and shoot left-handed and not have to worry about the brass hitting in your face. This ejection port buffer really does throw it forward with the 5.56. It just locked open on the last shot. The recoil impulse is very subtle, and when it locks open on the last round, it's not nearly as noticeable as like an AR-15. You can just barely feel it lock open. I think with a little bit of shooting, you'll get used to it, and you'll be able to tell fairly easily. Really nice shooting rifle. You know, this is the empty magazine to drop the magazine. I was talking to some of the IDF guys at uh, SHOT Show, and they'll drop the mags like this. They'll hit the trigger, drop the magazine out, grab another magazine, stick it in, and then come up with their hand and release the bolt release, which is right here and resume firing. Safety's right there, it's real easy to get to. Now this is the basic model, it will sell for $19.99. This is an SRS scope, it's a Trigicon. I'll talk a little bit more about this site later, but I, I put this on the rifle. It doesn't come with any optics for the $19.99. It does come with the quick detach mounts already in the rifle. Now you can't pick these rifles up just yet. This rifle is a pre-release rifle. This is a rifle that's been made available to gun riders and such, uh, but you know, the price is the same for the gun riders. So $19.99 for this rifle. It's also available in Flat Dark Earth. I did get a chance to see the Flat Dark Earth rifles at SHOT Show. I really like them. I was kind of hoping to get one of those, uh, but all I could get was a black right now. But overall, the quality seems to be there. This thing is really, really nice. The first Tavor that I shot down at the Bullpup shoot was an actual Israeli-made gun. It wasn't a US-made gun. This is the actual US-made rifle. And from what I can tell and what I remember the original rifle, this thing is identical. It's no different. So anyway, I'm gonna shoot some more with it. Really enjoying it. The trigger pull is right around, I'd say it's nine pounds, but it's not your typical bullpup trigger either. 
It's a little heavy, but it's very crisp when it lets off. It's very easy to get a nice release, and uh, I'll do some accuracy testing in the formal review. I'm not going to do any of that out here this afternoon. Locked open. I am shooting Wolf ammo out here this afternoon, and this is a second generation P mag. That's what it's working with. It ships with uh, CAA magazines, two of them, but the P mags work just fine. It's an unmodified P mag. I know some of you guys are talking about that. So it seems to work just fine with the Gen 2s and the Gen 3s. I've been using a Gen 3 P mag in it as well. I'll just give you guys a quick peek inside the rifle. Again, when I do the full review, I'll give you more information on how this thing works and what it looks like on the inside. But I just want to show you how simple this thing is to field strip. You'll use a tip of a bullet, push the pins through. They are captive pins. Just pop it out, and you'll notice the bolt carrier group just comes right out of the rifle. Now, you'll notice that the gas system is a really short piston system. We'll talk about that more in the review. Also, you have two pins to get to your trigger pack. I lost my bullet, so I'm going to grab another one here. Push out your two pins right here and right here. Pull the pins through, they are captive pins. Pull them through. This is your bolt release. Reach inside and you can grab your trigger group. Look at that little thing. Isn't that crazy? But again, more on all that a little bit later in the full review. Well, it looks like I got the rifle sighted in, so I'm really looking forward to doing some more shooting with this rifle, coming up with an opinion that I can share with you guys in the full review. I just give you a little bit of information in this video. I'm sorry, guys. I know you probably have a lot more questions, but feel free to ask those questions in the comment section down below. I'll try to answer those questions as best I can in that full review. So far, 100% reliability with Wolf and Federal Ammunition using pretty much any polymer mag I can find. But in the full review, I'll include the X-15 drum, and some other magazines, so we'll get a good sampling of magazines, what this rifle works with, hopefully works with. So anyway, guys, if you have any questions, again, ask those questions down below. If you like this video, please be sure to like and share it, and you can also find us on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook to ask questions at www.facebook.com forward slash military arms. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to come back for the full review. I think you're going to like it. We'll talk to you soon. You guys have no idea what it's like trying to be a cameraman for this guy. He's abusive, he's violent, he beats me. Shut up and get over here with that camera! <laughs>